Good morning, Sunday morning. I just released a video uh, showing how I made these doors. I made that video a little bit differently. It's actually the way I wanted to do the cabinet itself. I wanted to go into a bit more detail, you know, explain things a little bit better and I try to focus on the thing that really makes the biggest difference and that's the measurements and sizing the door. And as a consequence, with all my concentration, I messed up <laughs> and made the parts, well, I didn't make the parts too short. I, I caught it just in time, which is important. But normally what I do is I, you know, have that one thing to focus on when I'm making these measurements because the filming's not happening then, right? And uh, I don't mess up. Either that or, I, or I make a SketchUp model and I, I, if I don't print off what I get from that, I actually write it down, right? In an itemized list, which is very important, okay? So these doors, pretty big. I still need to make handles. For them and for those over there but I decided to wait right until everything was done and I actually added bumpers to the back as well these little rubber bumpers so that sounds better and it also brings it out flush with this door down here because when you mount these hinges they need clearance on the side right over here they, they can't be touching the cabinet right so if they're touching the cabinet in the middle, it looks like it's dipped in, but nice and uh, flush right across, nice gap, beautiful, right? I've already got some junk put up there, but nothing, nothing actually organized, right? I need to go through the shop. Uh, uh, what else can I talk about? The door that swings down, the two magnets that keep it closed up there. Um, like I said in the video, the door had some twist when I put it on. Um, I, I uh, took some of that out with the hinge by actually rotating the door slightly so that it closes up tighter. And then the magnets also help to hold the door closed so it'll train it in that new position. But in the meantime, I let it sit overnight with it cranked. You know, I had. Uh, a piece of wood stuck in here and I had a prop pushing up against this end to you know hold it in that twist overnight and that seems to have helped a great deal. The twist wasn't that bad to begin with but when you're working with a butt hinge or a piano hinge you don't have a lot of options. These ones up here you know you have a lot more. I wish I had handles on here. You know you, you can adjust these all over the place right? So yeah, really happy with this, really happy with the, the project overall. I think it was well worth it. I mean, it's not just this, it's also the air cleaner and the new tool cubbies over there. It's this that got all cleaned up as well. I'll move this down here, I can move my bandsaw back up into the corner where it belongs over there. It was not good, okay? There was not a good area for it. This is, uh, next thing to do, Okay, I want to build a new workbench, and I think that's the next major project. But I think before that, I have a new version of my quick release vise. This is something that I've been meaning to update for a couple of years. I actually just started to redesign it a couple of years ago, and then recently got back into it, and I have the redesign kind of finalized. All I need to do is build it and finish the plans and make those available. I think they're gonna flat out replace the plans that are already on there. So I don't see the point in leaving the old ones up there. The new one is not a lot different, but it should be a little bit easier to make, a little bit. It's still a fairly complex thing to build a quick release vise of any type, and especially so if you're making it from wood. But I'm like, I've used mine for what, going on 10 years now. And it's awesome. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Although the new bench that I'm going to build, and I'll put a picture on the screen right now of the artist's rendering of it, will have a different type of vise. It'll have two, actually, a shoulder vise on one end, which is a traditional Scandinavian design. I always like that vise because it's wide open doesn't have any bars going through it. And then 
it'll have, you know, the typical wagon vise on the end. With the twist, though, the wagon vise on this one won't, the screw won't be sticking out. That's what I didn't like about, because I had the same thing on that bench, and I cut the end off, I shortened it up, right? I had a wagon vise on there, but every time you spooled it out, that screw would be sticking out so far. So this one doesn't move. It stays uh, stationary, and the screw instead embeds itself further in the wagon or the block, right? So that's the way I designed it. Should be an excellent project. I talked about in the last video about putting lights up there. I need to experiment with stuff. I brought out a couple of the 24 inch strips to try something. I'm actually gonna put them on top of these cabinets so they shine up on the ceiling and see how that looks because it's kind of inconvenient to do that there. The other way was, I was thinking about was to have them um, on a kind of a holder up on the ceiling pointing down at the wall. So it would reflect off that back wall there, which is kind of dark. And that would brighten it. I already tried that actually with this, um, this light right here. Okay, here, you see that? Can you see that? <laughs> and uh, it looked good. But I'm going to try both ways. That's what I'm out here to do now. I'm also out here to give the uh, cabinet doors another coat of water-based polyurethane. I, although I can't do that. The stuff I used was the amber um, color stuff that I had for a few years. And it's the stuff that I used originally on this. Because I bought it by mistake. I didn't notice it. And I don't like bringing stuff back, so I used it on this, I used it on a few different things, and I used it for the first coat on that. It does add a little bit more um, darkness to it, though, and I didn't want that with the additional coat, so I need to go get a new can. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the stainless steel squares that I made. I took a kick plate. It was actually the kick plate that I used to make a new base on my um, my plane that I dropped, my block plane, and I made a couple of smaller squares. Now these don't have any measurements on them, but then these are something that I wouldn't use measurements on anyway. The only measurements I would use on a square are like the stuff that's on the framing square, right? Nothing else needs measurements, not in my world <laughs> anyway. So this is an exclusive video as usual. And uh, I can't say as usual, but it's becoming usual. I'd like for it to become usual. And as usual, if you uh, don't want to help out, don't want to support the stuff that I'm doing here, or you know, you're just plain broke, you don't have the, the funds, not even a dollar a month, not even $12 per year, you can get this on my website as well. Um, there's a link in the description. You can go there and watch it for free. Okay? Uh, I made these with hand tools only. I cut them out with a hacksaw, which was kind of questionable before I started it. Kick plates are generally not a hard grade of stainless, but some are. I've had some that were very hard, and I just didn't know before I started. Because everything I did with that up there, I think... No, I used some files. I used some files cutting out the... The throat opening for the plane so yeah I, I kind of knew in the back of my mind but I kind of forgot anyway these are as accurate as I possibly can make them using the tools that I have like I didn't spend a lot of time if I had spent maybe an extra hour or so I could get them to the point where they wouldn't even be a thousandth of an inch off but for woodworking these are awesome. They're perfectly square in that regard. Because woodworking, like I said before, you've got some tolerances, you know? It's almost like when you're doing woodworking, you only have to go to a certain point, and anything beyond that is just a, a wasted effort because wood will move, and it'll take up that difference. You know what I mean? So diminishing returns, that's the term. So this one I've already used a couple times, and this one I'm not sure, you know, it'll come in handy, right? As long as it's in a handy place. And that'll get me back to the workbench again. Let me put these down. I want to build the workbench, 
And then I want to redo the tool board up there because my new way of thinking is that the workbench should have everything that you would use at the workbench. And that would be the chisels, the screwdrivers, everything like hand tools, the stuff you'd use to assemble stuff, uh, even screwdriver bits and uh, like driver bits and stuff. And not so much drill bits because I had the drill print cabinet over there, but I'm going to eventually redo that too. Okay. <laughs> redo everything. Redo it all. And uh, so I want to get the workbench done. I've got a bank of drawers, like a, a series of drawers underneath that will hold these things and get all that organized. And then I'll know what has to go on a tool board. And I've also got some different ideas for the tool board. I'm not going to make a slat wall for the next one, because as it turns out, that was that would be handy if you were changing stuff up all the time. You, you see this kind of stuff in stores and stuff that are to change inventory. But in a workshop, you really don't change much. So I don't know, kind of handy. I changed it up one time only. I moved a few things around. But even then, it was kind of a pain, right? So no more slat wall. It'll be just a straight piece of plywood, um, most likely. It could be solid wood. You know, I'm on a kind of a solid wood kick here. That's the workbench is going to be all solid wood, except for a couple of exceptions, which I'll, you know, I'll highlight when I go into building it, which will make it interesting, make it different from what everybody else is doing. Okay. Anyway, I think I'll wrap this one up here. I probably talked more than enough. Uh, I can't think of anything else to say. Talked about the light, talked about the squares, talked about this. That's it. See you next time. Money is a blessing and a curse. No, don't blame money. It's people. Mm. Sore losers making up stories how we're villains, the, the, the dreamers, the hard workers, in the office before dawn, toiling, saving. Ebenezer Scrooge and the like. Have you heard of the vile maxim? No. 